All right, friends, as promised, we are reading chapter three in this book now. Chapter three is called The Shark Attacks, The Facts. And we've already read some of these pages together, but we're gonna keep going. Let me scoot over, here we go. Shark Attacks, The Facts. If you're terrified of sharks, you're not alone. Shark attacks make frightening headlines and movies like Jaws spread the fear that sharks are bloodthirsty killers. In fact, many people are scared just by the thought of sharks. But the truth is that shark attacks are actually very rare. A person is far more likely to be hit by a car or struck by lightning than be attacked by a shark. And here we see two, we see Jaws and we see La Petite Parisienne. And it looks a lot like um, that painting we looked at the other day, doesn't it? With the sharks in the water. Interesting. Popular fiction has helped spread false fears about sharks. There are more than 350 different species or types of sharks. And of these, only about 30 have ever been known to attack humans. But there are three that are really dangerous. The great white shark, the bull shark, and the tiger shark. A tiger shark is large and powerful enough to attack most sea creatures. There's the tiger shark. Then we have bull sharks. Bull sharks are, some, are one of the few sharks that live in both fresh and seawater. And then we have the great white shark. The great white shark is the most feared and fearsome of all sharks. It has been known to attack boats. Whether or not you are in danger of a shark attack depends on where you live in the world. Sharks are found almost everywhere, but they seem to perform prefer warm water. Most shark attacks happen in Australia, Brazil, California, Florida, Hawaii, and South Africa. They often occur near crowded beaches where people go to swim, sail, and surf. But even in a very bad year, sharks attack no more than 80 to 100 people in the whole world. And modern transportation and medical care mean that only 10 to 15 of these people die. Even then, sharks don't usually set out to attack people. Often they ignore people in the water. So what makes a shark attack a human? And here we have our world map and it says this symbol on the map shows the location of fatal shark attacks around the world so here's the symbol you're looking for and here is the picture that shows all those shark attacks fatal shark attacks I should say which means that the, per the person who was attacked by the shark ended up dying from that attack some people believe sharks attack when they feel threatened. A diver may, may unknowingly swim into a shark's territory. In this case, a shark may only bite a human once. It will then release rather than eat the invader. Perhaps this is what happened to diver Henry Borse. A single bite from a large shark resulted in him losing a leg. Divers are sometimes attacked while carrying fish they have caught. The blood and frantic movements of the dying fish attract sharks who can smell blood from a great distance. And here we have Henry Borse, and he lost a leg, but look what, he's still wearing a flipper, so he must keep exploring, even though he was attacked by a shark. A shark's view of a seal and a body border from below. So look, one of those is a seal, and one of those is a body border. So maybe that's why sharks are attacking. Sometimes a shark attack could be a case of mistaken identity. From a shark's point of view, a surfer or a bodyboarder looks like its favorite food, a seal. Once the shark has a taste of the board, it will spit it out and go away. Many surfers are still alive to tell the tale with a munched surfboard to prove it. This surfer's board was bitten by a 13 foot or four meter tiger shark in Hawaii. A shark att an attack may happen because a shark is very hungry. Experts think that Raymond Short was attacked by a hungry shark while swimming in the water off a crowded Australian beach. Raymond was swimming near the shore when he was bitten by a shark. Six lifeguards immediately dashed into the sea to save him. 
but as they started to carry Raymond towards the shore, the lifeguards realized that the shark was still attached to Raymond's leg. Raymond had to be pulled right onto the beach before the shark let go of his leg. The shark had a long wound against his, along its stomach. It had been badly injured. Scientists think the shark had been unable to catch its normal food and was so hungry it took unusual risks. Another strange attack took place in a very unexpected place, a creek. 12-year-old Lester Stilwell was swimming with his friends in Matawan Creek in New Jersey. Suddenly, he screamed and disappeared beneath the water. A man named Stanley Fisher rushed into the creek to drag Lester's lifeless body from the water. Suddenly, Stanley felt something bump his right leg. When he reached down, he realized part of his leg had been ripped away. They had been attacked by a shark. Tragically, both died from their wounds. Was this attack really so strange? Not if you know about sharks. Even though the shark was never found, it was most likely a bull shark, a species that lives in both fresh and salt water. All right, friends, that is chapter three of our book. Keep tuning in and we will keep reading our book, Shark Attack. Bye, friends. <laughs>